If we dug up for you the different uh, stages of the, 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 the prototypes, from the, this is not the very first, but nearly the very first. Um, so as mentioned, the idea is to try to get the sound all around. So, uh, and, and still from the, the, the marketing point of view, the, the purpose was to uh, address the, the micro hi-fi range. So it's not about the, 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 the column speakers or the tall boy speakers. It's really uh, about more bookshelf speakers. So okay, we already had the compact compactness uh, in mind from the beginning. <coughs> so as you, as you see, okay, the Twitter up from the beginning uh, tried to okay, make it as uh, freestanding as possible in the air. And so here the woofer completely upward, so you get, you get completely, uh, at least in this plane, uh, completely uh, the same sound all around actually. Um, uh, <coughs> and then, so we use that first prototype actually to experiment with the different uh, locations and see, okay, how far are we and how those two match up together because there are some frequencies where they will play together actually. In the bass, I don't know how familiar you are with all of this. By the way, uh, we want this, if possible, to be a very informal session. So just interrupt us if yes. you have questions or you want to say, ah, but what about that? And uh, let's do like this, <laughs> if you're okay. Uh, <coughs> so the woofer is responsible in charge of the very low frequencies, the Twitter, the high frequencies, but there will be a range of frequencies, the medium in the voice, very critical range actually, where they will play together. And this is very tricky. When you start to play with the, with the position, so with the angle, this will immediately affect, uh, affect the voice range and how, how it's perceived. So we need uh, to work a lot on this. So we use this one and uh, yeah, very do-it-yourself-like uh, to play with the different distance and variations. Uh, at the same time, to play uh, already with the first. So actually you have here an example of the really handmade uh, crossover filter. So this is the um, piece of electronics responsible for, uh, let's say, addressing the right part of the sound to the woofer and the, the other part of the sound to the tweeter. Uh, and then we can play around with those components. We have a yeah, full box of those. Uh, actually, to, 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 to fine tune and uh, always, so we build and listen again and build and listen again and measure to, to uh, actually understand what we are doing and at the same evaluate it. I don't know if you already went through the sound quality process and how we do the listening tests and so on with our colleague. Okay, then I don't need to. I can refer to that one actually. Uh, so this was the first uh, stage. Then a second stage is actually uh, one of the issues we found is that uh, okay it's very nice in this plane that Twitter is playing all around but there is a, actually a heavy baffle here so quite some reflections of the sound from the Twitter to the woofer and then up to the ceiling to the to the side walls and so on so this is a, one example of the of a later version where okay we try to really cut straight uh, around the woofer to actually play and see the effect on this reflection to minify to minimize all the reflections going to the to downwards from the Twitter. Is it clear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, maybe not much to say about uh, uh, this one. And then between those two, uh, we are getting more into the, the let's say, the, the real product uh, uh, phase. Uh, and then the design people uh, came into the play and they actually uh, uh, did uh, quite a big consumer research, I think in France and Germany, testing three different, uh, let's say, shapes to ask uh, people's feedback. In general, okay, do they like it? Is it nice? But also, uh, is it uh, uh, is the shape good in line with the sound story we want to make? Because the, all this product was starting from the say, technology and an idea from the from the acoustics point of view. But you also need to have a design that is not uh, uh, say betraying what you want to say from the acoustics point of view. Does it uh, make sense? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so out of the concepts, this uh, like squarish box uh, was actually selected. So then from uh, here, from the let's say the sound lab point of view, we still need to tell them, okay, uh, guys, we want uh, round edges everywhere. Uh, we, we specify the angle, so we still have an influence because we want still to have the performance as good as our uh, uh, early prototypes. Uh, and then maybe one uh, interesting thing to see is that uh, all of it looked very good. So that we we got uh, after we selected and agreed with the, the speaker driver and so on, got this sample. And then measured it and listened to it. I don't know exactly in which order, but then uh, we actually discovered that the Twitter here is uh, recessed by like three millimeter from the outer baffle. And from you look from far away, it doesn't really matter. But for sound, it really matters when you want to get to a certain level of quality, because this uh, recessed Twitter will make that there is some kind of tunnel in front of it. And this tunnel has a, a few effects. I mean, the obvious one is that the sound cannot really go up to the sides compared to a non-recessed tweeter like this one. So the, the sound is reflected and goes back there. And also this tunnel will create some kind of um, a mass of air. 
that moves and it's like uh, uh, if you imagine a spring and a mass like this you, you pull the mass and you leave it the mass will do like this re re resonate and uh, it will also uh, let me put it <laughs> it's a bit tricky if you if you shake the, the spring the mass will not follow or not follow as quick as, as the shaking you do you see what I mean mm -hmm. it's the same thing for the mass of air if you want to move that mass over, especially in high frequencies, it will not move fast enough. It will actually slow down or reduce the efficiency at those high frequencies. If you measure with the setup we show you, this compared to this, you will see at some point uh, a small increase, which corresponds to the resonance of the mass of the swing. And in high frequencies, actually a decrease, not wanted, because of this mass of air. Just because of this stupid two millimeter. Uh, <laughs> so, went back again to design. Sorry, guys. Uh, we <laughs> want a little bit more to the front. Uh, and then we were happy, and this is actually the. Yeah, this one is actually the final version. Yeah. Uh, the color doesn't matter to sound. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something else, maybe we can. Yes. Ah, oh, the crossover, yeah. Yeah. You want to. But there's not much <laughs> to say, but yeah, we. So we start uh, the design mm -hmm. of the crossover. Uh, some people here might know, but there are very traditional crossover designs, uh, Butterworth. Uh, Chevy Chef, those kind of uh, very mathematical designs that you can start with. Uh, <coughs> you implement them, you measure them in the anechoic room, you listen to them, but once you start listening to them, you want to fine tune certain parameters and you actually deviate from the theoretical best solution because in theory and practice, not always uh, align. And especially one thing is very noticeable that at first in the anechoic room, when you do measurements on a full system, so woofer, crossover, tweeter, you go for a flat frequency response, but then when you start listening to it, sometimes this will actually sound a bit harsh or a bit too bright. And by, by uh, changing some of the components of the crossover, you can actually change the balance and, and uh, send less or more uh, high frequencies to the tweeter and, and things like that. And so maybe you can mention the time aspect. Sure, yeah. yes. Uh, with this particular loudspeaker, one thing is uh, quite difficult to get right is the, the time alignment. With uh, <coughs> a normal uh, loudspeaker baffle, like, like the one there, for instance, the... This is not the most normal. But no, but <laughs> it, it's more normal. Uh, you can imagine that sound starts from this plane and it will arrive at the listener's ear at the same moment in time. Uh, with this, it's more difficult to align it correctly. And also the... the the crossover point there come, comes into play. But what's interesting to see is that we start with very large, very expensive uh, components, and then when it actually comes down to production, the size of the components is very much uh, shrunk down. And uh, it's up to us as well to check then that we still have the correct values, uh, the tolerances are okay, and things like that. Like a small micro system. So, it's literally two small speakers in one volume. In, uh, sorry, not one volume, one, f one shape. Mm -hmm. uh, we stayed with very high quality drivers, very high quality electronics. And that was this, this, this part of the process. In the prototype, we, we tested uh, the high quality tweeter, the high quality woofer. And obviously the, the, the acoustic volume behind the woofer is chosen very specifically to get the, the correct bass response. And then when we actually moved more towards the design of the, the final product, uh, things like the, the rounded shape uh, are there to minimize resonances in the case. Uh, and what was clear from the prototype, the, the sharp edges caused issues. Uh, as we mentioned before with the baffle, any, any sharp edge actually becomes a source of its own and you want to avoid that as much as possible. So in the final product, the, the, all, the, all the edges are, are smooth. So in, in, in terms of, of concept, it's very much a, a micro system in, in, in one box but still having two completely separate loudspeakers so that the, the, the movement of one speaker 
does not influence the movement of another. Because if they would be sharing a volume, then you can imagine that if one moves it in, it, it creates pressure into the volume, which actually moves the other one out. So if there is discrepancies, no, no two drivers are exactly the same. So they will never move at exactly the same time. And then having one volume becomes an issue. So this is a, this is a better approach for getting a, a, a correct base response. Loic, I don't know if you can... Yeah, maybe more. one thing to mention is that the, within the shape, we also always try to have, the, especially the high frequencies, as far apart as possible to preserve the stereo image. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. quite key. So yeah. if you compare this to some other products, you, can, you might find that the stereo image is still the same, acceptable in yeah. general and very good for a compact product. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was one of the questions, obviously, uh, in the previous workshop as well. What about stereo image? Because yes, it's a small form factor. Yeah, there is no denying that uh, uh, two loudspeakers placed uh, two meters apart will give you a wider uh, stereo image. There is no, uh, there's no denying that. But at least here, the, the it's as wide as it can be within such a small mm. form factor. Yeah. And why are uh, the speakers turned inside? Why are they directed inside? Actually, this is more for the, the, the design. Uh, this is for the woofer, it's more for the design. Actually, there was a big uh, big discussion on this mm. one. Uh, because for the Twitter, we absolutely uh, absolutely don't want that. Mm. Because the Twitter, um, this is for the high frequencies, and that's also why... I mean, I finished first with the question. Mm. <coughs> uh, yeah, for the high frequencies, uh, which get more directional, you definitely don't want to point it towards. Otherwise, uh, actually, you get some benefit is that your sound image is more stable if you're not directly mm -hmm. in front of the device. But in general, it feels less wide. Very simply, because if you uh, imagine the other extreme, if you point completely outwards, mm -hmm. then the, it will point to the uh, side walls. You will hear more energy from the side walls, and it will feel wider. Less clean, but wider. <laughs> so at least for this one, actually, we tried many things. Uh, and also discussed with design how to, uh, let's say, um, not betray the shape they want it. Uh, but still uh, have the, the high quality we wanted, uh, as Philips also, I mean, not, al not only our team. <laughs> <laughs> still, our team here is very much into sound, <laughs> I would say. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so in the end, um, the, 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 the Twitter act are actually exactly front-facing. Uh, for the woofer, they are slightly angled, but actually we measured and listened, it makes no difference compared to the uh, completely zero degree mm -hmm. uh, front-facing. Uh, and also, there was quite some energy and uh, experiments uh, to work with, with this. Uh, we don't want any edges, as uh, uh, Thomas said, but also, um, ideally, imagine you are a woofer, you don't want to see anything. You want to have a very broad, nice horizon. So and that's this whole idea and the angles here and the, the, all the... Uh, also, still making the thing that you can build it and unbuild it <laughs> was quite a challenge, actually. So that's why you, this shape might seem strange, but it's the best we found for the, for the acoustics point of view, actually. To still get a wide sound in this compact uh, form factor. Um, that's, that's purely acoustics, obviously. In this product, there's also a DSP. Uh, there is full sound, so that's... Uh, dynamic bass enhancement, and, uh, which helps obviously because it's still, there's still compromise in terms of volume. Uh, the bigger volume you have behind the woofer, the lower it can resonate. And with full sound you can help there and, and, and boost regions where, where the, the volume is, is lacking. Maybe an important point mm -hmm. to mention also the DSP here is responsible that, so that you never hear any distortion. Mm -hmm. so it actually monitors and controls the distortion, especially when you get to very high levels and listen to R&B at the same time, let's say. Uh, you can try to then try to, uh, it will start to change, let's say, the, the mechanical movement, just physically the woofer can do. And then uh, the DSP takes, takes care that uh, measures that basically actually in the signal and makes sure that we never go over, uh, let's say, an acceptable limit where you get audible distortion. You can still play very loud, but you will 